Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. I want to put back up uh, that, uh, uh, that song where it talks about as I come into your presence, past the gates of praise. I would put the verb, not the verbs, the words, I guess, up there. I guess that is the action words. As we come into you, I don't even know if that is part of the verse. I know it's part of the song. I didn't know if it was on the screen. My eyes were closed. Sound booth. I didn't know if you're catching me. All right. Are you ready? We're going to talk a little bit about Jesus for a second because we magnify Jesus because he gave us access to the Father. This is why we magnify Jesus, not just because he paid the price for our sins, but because he gave us access to the Father. You know, when, when the veil was torn, it was because the payment of the spotless lamb satisfied the payment of, of, of our sins. So a veil was torn, so now we're where we could be with the, with the presence of the Lord forever. When we come to, to the Father, we always come to Him in Jesus' name. This is why we pray in the name of Jesus. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you are going to hold hands today at lunch and you're going to pray over your food and thank the Lord for your dad and just all of his, you know, the gifts that, just how good he's been or whatever. Sometimes these days, like Father's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas, there's there times to reflect. But you might say, in Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. We say, in Jesus' name, because that's how we come to the Father. And so we, as we come into your presence, past the gates of praise and to your sanctuary, just to see your face, this is why we are magnifying Jesus, because he's the one that made the way so that we could come to our Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you this morning. We just give you, we just close our eyes and we just uh, open our hands, palms to, to, to you, to heaven. Father, we just, we just honor you today as our Father. As king, we honor you. First place. And we thank you for your love, your kindness, your countenance that's turned towards us, your children. Be blessed today. We're just a posture to receive from you. All eyes, hearts turned with adoration towards you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, on Father's Day, and I'm not going to say this is the case for every dad, every father, I believe it is. Um, when, people, when they ask you, what do you want to do for Father's Day? Where do you want to go? What, what happens more often than not is the dad says, well, whatever you want to do. Or there's this, like, how can I be a blessing to my family? And um, that's not unique to humanity. That was our father. That, that initiated that, that love in, in our hearts. He, so he, the same way, like, uh, uh, you're, you're thinking like, well, hey, we're, I know I would like this, but I want everybody to enjoy. I want, you know, that's how our father thinks. And so how, how special is that? So um, I just want to take a moment and just uh, honor the fathers in here. You know, the Bible tells us um, there, there are, there's not many fathers, but in this house, there's quite a few. And... Um, we were listening to a message um, by Jeremy Pearson. He was talking about Joseph, and uh, and how many remember Joseph? He was one of the sons of of, of the twelve tribes of Israel. He's one of the twelve tribes, um, sons of Jacob. Uh, anyway, and he had been sold into slavery, and he was in Potiphar's house. And uh, one of the things he had talked about how when he was in Potiphar's house. Uh, Potiphar's wife uh, tried to get a hold of him and for a long time she said hey I want to sleep with you and he's like no I'm not sleeping with you I have command of everything in the house but you are my are my masters and I'm not touching you well one day when all the men were out of the house she grabbed a hold of him and so now he couldn't defend himself because uh, there was women could the women could, at that time could have said no 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 it was her but how many of you know um, because there wasn't a man in the another man in the house um, 
man, his, he, he was in trouble. And he was just talking about how there was not a man in the house. And, I, and we were just talking about how thankful for we were uh, for this house, how many men are in the house. And so all, all the fathers, if you'll stand up today, I want you to see this. You could be on a lake. You could be on a golf course. You're in this house. You're in this house. It's a blessing to me. And uh, I believe the Lord will honor you for that. Amen. Grab a chair. Thank you, Lord. So special. So special. So we're going to talk today about our Father. Can we do that? So uh, it's kind of a standalone uh, message, but really it kind of also builds a little bit out out of uh, last week. Um, We were really talking a little bit about Abraham uh, towards the end and the blessings of Abraham. We kind of closed the message uh, with that. And so the title of this morning's message is Our Father, Our Father. How many of you know we have a father? I'm just so thankful that we're not illegitimate children. We're not, we're not fatherless. Um, you know, a father is one that has the right to teach you. You think about this. A father, uh, if you have a father of your faith, it's, it's one that you gave the right to teach. A father has, has a, a, the authority, not just the right, but the authority to teach. And this is why it's so important for fathers to be present in the home and to be teaching, and to honor the role that which God had set. You know, in this day and age and agendas and all these kind of crazy things, um, sometimes uh, to to make one thing uh, greater, we think we need to pull another thing down. And that's not the case. Uh, We're to honor uh, honor each. The Bible tells us in... um, and Peter, he tells us that we're to husbands honor your wives as the weaker vessel. Uh, in other words, not as a weak, but as is, as precious, like a vase, um, so that your prayers wouldn't be hindered and you would inherit the grace or the gifts of life. And so we see this, but then we also see in Ephesians that God tells uh, tells to the ladies or wives to honor your husbands, doesn't it? So it's like this: this you don't down one to raise the other, you make both are great. Both are wonderful, you know. And, um, and so the role of a man and the role of a father, um, uh, we can learn from our father, from the Lord. Um, and, and just how to be a man and all, all of those kind of things or how to be, um, I, I would say, masculine or uh, who God is. Yet God, uh, he's a consuming fire, yet he's like a lamb. You know, so there's a lot, many attributes, but I want to, um, I want to look this morning or this morning to, uh, talking about the principles of heaven. Cause we're, I know how many of you were here on Wednesday night. I'm telling you, if you weren't here and if you were here, you need to listen to that again. It was about a 35 minute message, super powerful talking about the ways of God. Huh? Oh, she's doing part two on Wednesday. So Miss Mona Parker, um, uh, she taught on Wednesday and we got mommed. Okay, today's Father's Day. That was getting mommed. Um, and I guess you're going to get some more mom this week. Uh, it's good. It was good. I'm telling you, we were very honored to, to hear the, the word. Um, but anyway, today we're going to talk. Um, she was talking about how there is um, the, the, the acts of God and then there's the ways of God, right? In other words, the things that God does, but then there's the way that he works. And she was, and I probably butchered that a little bit, but just talking about really the principles of heaven. And so Matthew chapter 6, 9 through 10, we're going to cruise right in here, and I, I want to look this morning at a few fathers, okay? Um, we're going to look at uh, a number of fathers. We're going to look at uh, Abraham. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Isaac. We're going to look at Jacob. We're going to look at and Esau, because in order to have a father, there's fathers and sons. There's this relationship going on. Um, you and I are children. That's how he's a father. You know, he wouldn't be a father without any sons and daughters. When we call him our father, it, that denotes you're a child of God. And so that's really cool. And we're going we're gonna to look at just different, different, different relationships. And so Matthew chapter 6, 9 through 10. After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, on Father's Day, I think, um, and Mother's Day and things of that nature, we always think of a way to honor mom and dad. Or we, uh, today would be a day we honor a dad. And um, this right here, when we talk about hallowed, you're, you know, we, we, hallowed be your name. You know, um, holy, glory, all that kind of honor mom and dad. But that, the, the hallowed, the holy, the set apart, that's for God only, Right. 
But there, there is, in a sense, is this honor for the Lord today. What would it look like? And to honor the Lord really would be to bring about his will. When you honor your father, uh, you, you're thinking like, um, what would he like for Father's Day? Or what would he like to eat? Or what would, and this right here is this picture of what would our father like. You know what he would like here on earth? He would like us, it to be like it is in heaven. That's what his heart would be. So if we could please the Father, if we could, we would, we would pray this way. And there's a, there's a way not just to pray this way, but there's a way um, it, that, that you're, uh, there's a key in a sense, a principle of heaven that would unlock or allow you and I not just to use words, but allow um, our words to become actions. And this is this, this thing of honor. So we're going to talk about honor this morning. We're going to look at how this fits into so many different pieces as a father. It, honor really is heaven's flow. Honor in, in, in heaven, um, it, it's like honor's like gravity. It's everywhere. It's, you know, if it wasn't there, everything would be out of order. But because it's there, everything's in order. And so it's the same way here. If we're going to pray our Father, you know, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Uh, here on earth as it is in heaven, we better get the right things in place. And the first thing in place, we need the gravity of heaven, which is honor in this place. If we want heaven in our home, we're going to have to have the gravity of heaven, which is honor in our home. There's the first, the first uh, commandment that's given to you and I uh, as a child, because we, whether we're 80 or 8, um, we were all once a child. And there's a commandment, and he said, this is the first commandment I'm giving to you, and it's a commandment with a promise, and that is honor your father and mother, that it might go what? Well with you. So there's something about, in other words, it, 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 just the fact that this sits here, it, it goes where I put it, because, because something's holding it down. Like, it's, things aren't just chaotic. Things are in order. It goes well with you and me when we establish the first thing, the first thing, again, the gravity of heaven. We can get that in our homes, which is honor. It'll go well with you so as a young man. And there's never a time when I outgrow honor. Never. There's never a time. The same way, I, no matter how old I get, I never outgrow gravity. No, no matter what. And so there's never a time. We're going to look at this. But uh, Ephesians 6, 2 through 3, that was that verse. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you. And you might live or you may live long on the earth. In other words, why, why is the significance of living long on the earth? Fulfilling your destiny. That's why. Um, so, the, he, so you could enjoy what God's also made. He's given us all things richly to enjoy. Let's not take that out, okay? Sometimes we, uh, let's not get so um, uh, spiritually, like, I don't know, we can get into this, like, oh, I gotta just please God, just please God. Well, you know what pleases God? The Father is pleasing, is seeing his children laugh and have fun, and, and, and we didn't get to do it. I wish I, be, but it was partly because of, what was we have a lift at, my, at our house right now, but it doesn't have a basket, it just has forks. And I so bad wanted to put it over the pond and jump off, you know, from way up high with my kids, and I told them we were going to do it, and then my wife told me it has forks and no basket, and it's not safe, and, but I love doing things for fun. Like, I love having my kids have fun. Like, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it, you know, and uh, she's the one that, you know, pulls us back. There's something in a father that just is like, let's have fun, right, um, and that's how God is. He wants us to have, uh, he wants us to enjoy life, all right, um, but anyway, so look at this. Um, and so we're talking about honor, the culture of heaven. We're, we're talking about the gravity of heaven. So um, it really is, is that of honor. And so if we want heaven here on earth, we're going to have to get, get honor here. But when I get honor here, I'm pulling heaven here. So there, I'm actually, there's actually a pull from heaven when I honor. So not only am I just in a sense like, like you know, turning the lights on and just, it just is here, but there's actual like a continual draw kind of like an electric electricity it's not that light just turns on it's that you allowed it to be drawn to that bulb or drawn to that vacuum or you know there's a actually a flow this is why you get electric bills we could turn everything off on this building and there would be no besides your service charge there would be no bill because there's no usage so do you get heaven in play 
honor, you know, we, there's a pull. So there's a draw, and that is honor. So, so as long as we, we can continue to pull heaven to earth if we keep honor on. So in my house, in my marriage, I can have a heavenly marriage. Like, we can be like happily ever after, continually, truly. Oh, yeah, I know, there's, yeah, I, know I understand there's problems and conflicts, but where there's conflicts, there's victories, okay? okay? Right? Yeah, so, but we can have a heavenly marriage if, if honor is present. I can have a heavenly, you know what's crazy? There's no strife with mom and dad when you honor mom and dad. Because strife talks about who's over who. Well, when I honor, I come under. There's no more strife. Is it so just like heaven from honor? Okay, look at this, uh, Matthew or Mark chapter 6, 4 through 5. And you've heard this, but, but we got to not just hear this. We've got we to we recognize that this truly is uh, so important. If we're going to please our Father uh, in, in heaven, here on earth as it is in heaven, honor would be a part of it. It says, Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own ta- hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And there he could do uh, no mighty work except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. So here's this passage where Jesus went to, to Galilee, his hometown, and he wanted so, so much in his heart. He was sent by the Father to his own people, to his hometown, and yet he couldn't do anything because there was no honor. So it was like the vacuum wouldn't work. So you check the outlet. You check the, it, it, what was it? There was no supply there. Like the breaker, it was cut. You and I, by dishonor, can cut the power of heaven in our lives. And so we see that here. And so maybe you've heard this. Um, and let's, let's, let's also uh, let this word kind of play back and forth a little bit. Honor and value, right? So honor means to hold in high esteem. Or to value means to hold in high esteem. So let those, let those kind of go back and forth, right? So um, how many of you believe that faith is important? right? Um, The Bible tells us, uh, by grace are you saved through faith, right? So faith is important to our salvation. Without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. So faith's important. Uh, First Peter, or not first Peter, but uh, first John uh, uh, five, it tells us this. I think first John five, four, it says, now this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So faith is part of victory. Like it's amazing. Faith is important, but but I access everything by faith, all the promises of God. But I access faith by honor. So, so many times you and I, we want, if, if you have faith this much, the size of, if you, this is all you need, this much faith. But you know, faith doesn't just come by hearing. It comes by hearing. It comes be, by my value of what I hear. That's how faith comes to me. So I, I, I access every promise by faith, but I access faith by honor or by value. Holding in esteem what mom or dad says. Otherwise, what ends up happening is, um, like let's just think of a, being a kid or a teenager. When mom and dad say something, but you don't honor what they're saying, you're thinking of a response or, you, or instead of asking, you're, you're questioning what they're saying instead of, Sometimes, sometimes we don't understand what they're saying, but we're, we're instead of trying to understand what they're saying and hear in their heart, we're questioning what they're saying. Have you ever been in that situation where you question what they say instead of asking a question to understand what they're saying? You know, in other words, you, you follow me? Okay. So anyway, so we know that honor unlocks heaven on earth. Honor releases the gift the gifts that heaven sends. We, we've talked about that often here. Honor releases uh, the gift that heaven sends. But uh, the same way, um, you know, if we honor the wrong voice, we can lock up heaven. So we're always honoring something. We're either honoring ourselves or God's word. Different word, okay? We're just trying to establish this before we look at the fathers this morning. The enemy would love for you and me to have a cluttered imagination, um, and to be filled with lots of uh, different voices and opinions 
of who God is, who others are. We're going to look at this here in a minute. This says this in 1 Timothy 6, 20 through 21. Oh, Timothy, guard the deposits entrusted to you. So these deposits, Timothy was the son uh, of Paul spiritually. And so Paul is telling Timothy, guard what your father has spoken to you. Again, we're talking about honoring our father this morning. So he would say this, guard what God has spoken to you. There's something about when dad has taught you something. Uh, who, is it just the kindergarten teacher that can unteach what you taught your son? You know what I mean? Or how, how long are you going to hold that? You know, is it just a conversation at the water cooler that after all these years of hearing a, a, a word from the Lord, that somebody's conversation, somebody's other word can just rob what their father instilled? It's, that's not, not a good thing. He said, oh, Timothy, my son, guard the deposit entrusted to you. And he said this, to actually avoid irreverent, irreverent babble, uh, and which would be that which would, would be dishonoring to what your father says or dishonoring to that, and contradictions of what some falsely call knowledge. For by pro- professing it, some have swerved from the faith. So he's saying, be on guard what God has spoken to you. Guard his word to you. All right? Um, again, because holding what God says in high esteem, because how I value this is how I can receive faith. This, but, but faith is the victory. But to get the faith, I'm going to have to value what he says. All right. Now, let's start in Genesis chapter 15, 1 and 2. We're going to talk uh, first, just for a moment, about Abraham. We could spend gobs of time on every one of these fathers. We're not going to. We're just going to talk about just different attributes of fathers. So I love this. Genesis 15, 1 and 2. It says this. After, after all these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. Don't go to two yet. So here's the deal. Abraham, God found Ab- Abram, which was not Abraham yet. Okay, God found Abram to make a covenant with. And he said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to, he saw faith and found, Abram found favor with God. And he said, I'm going to bless you. But, but this is super important. Fathers have what they're going to leave their children in mind. Fathers, fathers have in their heart, what am I going to leave my children? They do. That not just my car, my land, although that's important that that's squared away and you do diligence to get a will together and some of these kind of things together. We're going to actually be bringing somebody in this summer to be talking along those lines because it's important. The Bible says that a, a good man, a righteous man, leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So it needs to be, uh, those kind of things need to be done. But this is how Abram, Abram thinks. Look at this next verse, verse 2. He says, um, oh, Lord, what are you going to give me? Like, what, is, what can you do that's of any value compared to what I can give to my kids? What are you going to give me since I am childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Like, he's saying, I don't, I don't have a child. Like, everything, I, I'm, I'm, to, I'm to pass something on to my, to my children. This is number one, a, a fa- one of the number one things in fathering is we have to be aware that I have a deposit to make. And don't, don't wait till you, even, even this, I was, as I was reading this, um, don't wait until you, ha- maybe, maybe you're grown and your kids are, are gone. Find a child like Paul did to Timothy. Find some children. Find some young men and some young women. Uh, ladies, find those young, la- the young ladies to impart spiritual truths that you would leave to them an inheritance of, of faith. All right, let's go to uh, Genesis 27, 1 through 7. So this was, um, you got Abraham and the, who had a son of promise, which was Isaac. So we're going to talk about Isaac. So it was so important and so embedded in Isaac from his father, Abraham, that, that, that there was something to be left, and not just left, but passed on. How many of you know it's one thing to just leave something to your kids. It's a whole nother thing to pass it on to your kids. There's something about the handoff. Hello. 
There's, some, there's something about that handoff and that touch, and you'll see this here. There's something about the handoff and the touch and, and just the awareness and the relationship. And this is why it's not just like I'm, I'm, I'm the busy dad just making money and then I don't even know my kids. Because what I can leave my kids is not what moth and rust and all that kind of stuff can eat. It's not, uh, the truck is going to break, right? The, the house is going to rot. The, the, but, but what you can instill, you, memories you can't steal. Two things in, in life that you can take with you to heaven. People and memories. Make sure you take both. Make sure you take both. I, if I could tell you, if I could encourage you, Dad, uh, and this is a, as spoken a, uh, to me as a young man, just when I was just grinding and working, it, it, that was spoken to me, and it changed how I handle vacation and 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 my my day. It just changed. So um, again, it's in the touch. Genesis twenty-seven one through seven. Isaac is now. Uh, let's just read it. Genesis 27, 1 through 7. He says, When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his older son, and said, said to him, My son. He answered, Here I am. So let's remember, Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Okay. He said, Behold, I'm old, and I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver, your bow, and go into the field to hunt game for me. And prepare for me delicious food such as I love and bring it to me so that I might eat, that my soul may be blessed before I die. So he's saying, and so you see this, this role of a father and a son and, and this honor. He's like, yeah, dad, yeah, I, I know what you like. Oh, I, I'm fixing to go to Minnesota to go fishing this weekend and um, I'm, I'm bringing my mom some plums. You're like, why are you bringing plums? I don't, we're going to make jam because, well, I'm, and some potatoes and some squash from the garden because they're in Minnesota. They isn't ready yet. Why do you do that? Because you just know what they like, right? Some of you might be like, I've got golf balls for my, when I go to my dad because he loves when I bring him a whole basket of golf balls or, or you know what I mean? And so this is like Esau. He, he knows what his dad likes. He wants to not just shoot a big old buck. He wants to shoot that young buck and bring that or that doe. Don't shoot a buck. Oh, no, I'm going to pass that one because dad really likes the does. You know, you're thinking this way. And so Esau, he knows exactly what his dad likes. Isn't that cool to think? It's important for you and I to take time to know what our dad likes. It's important. It's important that we don't just wait till Father's Day to try to think, what could I get my dad? Or my mom. Just, this, this is the same that is true for our father. It's important that we don't just wait till Christmas or Easter and think, oh, what should I do for Easter or for Christmas to honor the Lord? But every time I come to his house, I'm thinking about honor him. Because every time we come and, 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 and to give worship and to give of our tithes and offerings, to give of our time and our service, I'm thinking, I just want to honor you. I, what, what pleases you? That he, even he knows that, that I'd become more aware of my words towards others because he know, I know that my father is pleased when my words bless others instead of curse others and say, you're such an idiot. You're so stupid. What's your problem? You're so worthless. I mean, any everybody ever been in a house with sons or daughters or kids and, and language that is so demeaning to one another? You think mom, when, when the kids fight, does it please mom and dad? When the kids demean one another, does it please mom and dad? When, when, when the son is talking about the other son or the daughter to the other brother, Okay, well, we got a bunch of kids right here. Wah, wah, wah. You think it pleases the Father? So when we're aware of what pleases the Father, I'm telling you, this is honor. We're talking about bringing heaven to earth, principles of heaven. Keep the gravity on so that things go well with you. Whew. Bless them. Hey, I just want to tell you, thanks. Change. Just be aware of what comes out. Okay, and so uh, I, so here's Esau. He's like, yeah, I know exactly what you want, Dad. I'm I'm going. I got my bow. I got. We're, I'll be right back. Okay, 
And so now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. And so when Esau went to the field to hunt for game and bring it, he calls unto Jacob. Rebekah said to his son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Bring me game and prepare me for me delicious food that I might eat it um, and bless you before I die. Let's go to uh, 28 and 29. Uh, 27, Genesis 27, 28 and 29. And so you see that he, the, the, this, this story that's going on here, um, and he says this, may God give you, so here's what happens. There's a, there's a deception that goes on in this time where Jacob goes and gets uh, goat hair, and he kills a goat and all this kind of stuff. He brings it in to bless Isaac, but Isaac's eyes are dim, so he can't see, and Jacob's like, hi, I'm Esau, you know? Oh, that sound, and Isaac's like, that's, you kind of sound uh, like Jacob, but he really sound even worse than Jacob. What, you know, it, and he's trying to imitate his brother Esau. So he's got the smell of his coat on, all this kind of stuff. And he said, no, I'm, no, I'm Isaac. Or no, I'm Esau. This is, he's, he's scared. He's scared. He actually talks to his mom and says, I'm going to be known as a deceiver. I, I don't want to do this. What if I get in trouble? And she's like, just do what I told you to do. If you look in the in the in between, and so after after Isaac is is duped into thinking it's Esau, he blesses he blesses Jacob, and I, I, this is just the blessing that's pronounced. So as a father, we see this: your your my words to bless, they're so important, or to curse. What does God say about you? He doesn't speak curses about you, does he? It's important what a father says. My wife actually called, uh, called me out on this yesterday. Um, I was shopping uh, for, for going fishing, and, uh, and my son FaceTimed me, and my youngest one. And I think he's back in there serving right now, so he won't. It's, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's bad on me. Um, and he had a bait caster. Now, Bait casters and me are not real good friends, especially since my thumb got uh, smushed. And um, so it's a little hard to just know exactly what's going on. So they like to bird nest on me real bad. Well, I haven't really been it because I didn't own that and know that trick really well from a young man. I haven't been able to pass that on to my son. And so there's some things, this is good. There's some things that you can pass on to your son because you own them. But what you don't own, you can't pass on. This is why it's so great to have other friends that can... Well, anyway, he, so he FaceTimed me, and they're at Academy, and he said, uh, hey, 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 and he holds up this brand new bait caster rod and reel, and I'm like, no, we're not getting that one. You have, we have two of those at home. They're, they're great. No, 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 that, that, that one always gets bird, you know, it always messes up, and I said, I said, it's not the rod or the reel. It's the user. That's what I said, just, that, just like that. Okay. It's not the rod or the reel. It's the user. No, you're not getting that. You have plenty, we have plenty of fishing rods. Put it back. Okay. So my mind as a father is like, I don't want to have to change more line. Okay. This is my, I mean, I don't want to have to buy more line. I don't want to have to buy a fishing rod. We have plenty of fishing rods. He can use my bait caster. He can have his bait caster. This is all the, that just simply says, it's not the rod or the reel. It's the user. Well, put it back. Da, 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 we're talking, get those H&H &H spinners, da, 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 okay? So this is, that was rude, right? How rude, okay? Bad. So I get a, a, a message from my wife, you hurt his feelings. And I'm like, what? She's like, do you know what you said? And I'm like, yeah, I did. yeah. Uh, I was just trying, hmm. It matters. So I had to, some work to do. You know, if you mess up and you know it, just go clean up the mess. Just go apologize. Dad, if I could give you one piece of advice, because you make mistakes. It's this, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry. I, not but, da, 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 da. I'm sorry. I love, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I messed up. It'll, it'll change everything. 
But watch the words of your mouth. Here's what he says to, to Jacob. And it empowered Jacob to prosper, not just his generation, but to, all the way to bring Jesus. May God give you... Oh, you went past. May God give you the dew of heaven. So this is the words of Isaac to Jacob. May God give you the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the land and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and the nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may your mother's sons now bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be everyone who blesses you. We see that this goes on to, for generations. This is Israel we're talking about. Jacob who becomes Israel. Wow. From a word that changed a life, and not just a life, but generation after generation after generation, change a generation with a blessing. Why We hear so much about generational curses. I want to tell you, change your generation with a blessing. Bless. Where there was a curse, bless. And it'll change a generation. And a generation, and a generation, and a generation. Let's go now to um, Genesis 25, 29 through 34. Because you might be thinking, well, that was just so wrong that Jacob, uh, Jacob stole what was rightfully Esau's. But that's not true. Because in Genesis chapter 25... Genesis 25, 29 through 34, we're going to read here. When Jacob had cooked some stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. He was hungry. And Esau said to Jacob, please let me have some of your, your, uh, your swallow of that. Let me have some of that soup, that stew. I'm famished. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Jacob said, first, sell me your birthright. Esau said, behold, I'm about to die. What use of this is this birthright to me? In next verse, and Jacob said, first swear to me. So he swore to him and sold Jacob his birthright. The last verse, 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went on his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. You know why? Because Esau was pretty self-sufficient. If you were to read the story about these two, Esau was a hairy, strong man, a hunter of the field. He, could, he was a man's man, and he could do it. Jacob was a mama's boy, and he dwelt in the tents. It's a, that's, that's in the scripture. So when you look at that, it says this, that not only Esau sold his birthright, but he despised the birthright. I don't need my father's blessing to prosper. This is, again, we're talking about fathers, but we're also talking about sons. Did you know it would Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the, all the way to Jesus, that was established because God found a man, Abram, who would command his children after him? Did you know because Esau despised and thought very little of his birthright? Did you know that the blessing and the inheritance and the transmission of, to, the next, to the next generation probably would have stopped with Esau? So it wasn't, it wasn't that God was like, oh, I'm going to give it to, to this guy. It's that it must carry on, and somebody has to value. Somebody has to value. Somebody has to value my words. If, if it's going to carry on to the next generation, somebody has to value my words. This is why the Bible talks about how it's, so, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to go into the kingdom of God. Like what does that mean, the eye of a needle? A gate, a small entrance into the city. A camel is tall with a hump on its back, right? And then if it's loaded, it's even taller. So you have to unload the camel to get through the gate. He said it's easier for a camel to unload to go through the door than it is for a rich man because a rich man doesn't need this. A rich man, a strong man doesn't need his help. I'm good. I, I look, at, look, I can get whatever I want. Why do I need this? I'll buy what I... But if this is going to pass on instead of end, like it would with Esau, you're going to have to value the, the birthright. You're going to have to value the blessing. So when I honor what a person carries, I'm actually putting a demand on it by faith. So, so it wasn't just that there was a release of words. It was that there was a reception of words because of the value that was instilled on it. This is why you can come in to church and there could be the driest 
message, according to who, I don't know, but if it's the word, and you could receive going, oh, that was so good. But you could come in here also and, and sit there and just be like this. And I don't know, I mean, Billy Graham could be up here bringing the message that a, hundred, a million souls came to. And you could say, I heard that before. Posture. Honor has a posture. Honor has a posture. So, so we see that, um, again, when I honor what the person carries, I'm actually putting a demand on it by faith, and it opens the door to receive what they carry. Now, the Bible tells us that the gifts, the, the graces, the gifts and, uh, that God has given, he's given to men. There are God gifts in others, your, in your brothers, your sisters, your moms and dads. You and I valuing them, it makes a demand on what heaven sent. Again, we're talking about having the gravity of heaven here on earth as it is in heaven. We're giving our Father, all of our Father, honor today. Honor. Honoring our... Let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings 2, 1 through 25. Now, this is a, a, a kind of more of a mouthful of Scripture here. But this is Elijah and Elisha. So we talk, we've talked about uh, sons, and do, uh, sons and fathers, right? We, we, actual blood. Sons and fathers. But let's talk more than just about just, oh, that's my dad. Let's talk about spiritual fathers. Let's talk about those that, because sometimes your dad's gone, but you still need to have a dad. You still need to have somebody to honor. Did you know you never outgrow having somebody to honor? And it doesn't, and you don't have to honor somebody that is necessarily has uh, more gray hair than you. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the grayest of all. So who am I going to honor? That little one over there? That young man that, you, that the Lord says, who am I to find a Timothy? Did you know it costs Paul to invest into Timothy? He says, and so this is Elijah with Elisha. So J comes before S. Okay, it's kind of prophet, right? All right, and it came about when the Lord was about to take up. We're going to cruise through this pretty quick. This is just the story of Elijah uh, passing on uh, his mantle to Elisha. And so you see the, the value here that Elisha has with Elijah, and he's not going to leave him. And this is important for you and me. We're just, again, learning how to value and how to honor our Father, keeping honor here. And it came about when the Lord was about to take up Elijah by a whirlwind to heaven that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. I'm going to go on. I'm going to go over to Bethel. You stay here. Um, and he says, I'm not leaving you. Is what he says. I'm not leaving you, Elijah. Elijah said, where you go, I'm going. Next verse. The sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came to Elisha and said to him, did you know that your master is going to be taken from you? Did you know that he's going to go to, he's like, I know, quit talking about it. I, I, don't, I don't need you to tell me that he's leaving. I know, and I'm not leaving him. Next verse. So Elijah said to uh, him, or Elijah said to Elisha, hey, now they're going to the next town. Hey, stay here, uh, for the Lord has sent me now to Jericho. But you know what Elijah said? Or Elisha said to Elijah, I'm not staying here. Guess where I'm going? Where you're going? So this is, so to pick up what your father is laying down, you got to be present. Sometimes... Sometimes dad is, gonna, is laying a lot of things down, but the son is not found. So there's responsibility on both ends here. Don't, don't, don't tell me, can you mentor me? Sure. You bet. As long as you're with me. You got to come to me. This is the, how you pick up what the father lays down is you're with the father. This is so important in, in this generation to be, to be heard. The son follows the father just like it does in age. The son is to follow the father. Both spiritually and we're to follow so we can pick up what they're laying down and so that I can stand on his shoulders and set a start over. Okay, let's keep, he says, uh, I, I'm going with you. So he went, they both went to Jericho. Next verse. 
And the sons of the prophets were at Jericho. Elijah said to him, do you know the Lord was going to also take? Same thing. These prophets are like, hey, do you know your master's going to be taken? I know. I know. All right. Be quiet. Don't talk about it anymore. Elijah said to him, please stay here for the Lord sent me to Jordan. So same thing. And as he said, the Lord lives. And as for yourself, I li- live. I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. So now they're both going to Jordan. Now watch what happens here. Now, 50 men of the sons of the prophets went out and they stood uh, at a distance watching as they're going to the Jordan. So they're like, man, Elijah and Elisha, they just came to town and now they're leaving. Now they're going to Jordan. Look at them go. Wow, he's not leaving them. It's just, this is a man of God, right? It's like, oh, I wish I could go with them. Look, it's amazing. Next verse, Elijah took his mantle, took his cloak, and he folded it together. I kind of think of that towel snap, okay? I don't know. You know, so he takes his mantle off and he folds it together and he takes it and he hits the water and the water parts. So they, they both walk across the river on dry ground. Powerful, powerful man of God. Do you see that? I think it's significant that they, the, 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 these All these people are watching and seeing the power. And sometimes you can stand so close and forget to put that in a story. Because, you know, in your own hometown is where you're least honored. So 50 people see this. 50 prophets. Oh, man, I just wish I could. And and so that two of them crossed over on drag out. Next verse. And when they crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I'm taken from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit come upon me. I want what you have. He didn't want something else. I want what you have. That's, that's probably the most honoring thing you could say. I just want you. I just want what you have. I just want, I, I don't, I'm not looking for something else that's better. I just want what you have. And he, goes, he says, um, you've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you've seen to me, when I'm taken up from you, it shall be for, uh, for you. So, but if not, it shall be so. Next verse. As they're going along and talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire uh, and horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. Elisha saw and cried out, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel, it's horsemen. And he saw Elijah no more. Then he took a hold of his own clothes and he tore them in pieces. In other words, he was like, no, my father's gone. He also took, he wasn't like, yes, my father's gone. I can get the money and drive his truck. Hello. I hope grandpa dies while I'm 40, so I don't. No, those are, those are devilish thoughts. So, and, and, and let's not lie and say that that hasn't that thought hasn't came when you hear about somebody else's inheritance or whatever, that kind of thing. You might think, I have no inheritance. I wish I had an inheritance, blah, blah, blah. Your inheritance is not limited to cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. It's what they carry. Okay? So pick up, pick up that. So he goes on, and so value what they carry, and then you'll want them around. And then you'll be able to actually draw, and you'll keep that heaven door open. All right. Anyway, he also took up the mantle of Elijah. So he also took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And he returned and he stood by the bank of the Jordan. So the piece of cloth, the mantle that Elijah had, Elisha picks it up. I'm not leaving it. He's valuing it. And he walks back where he came from because he, he was following him everywhere. Now he's like, well, I guess I'm going to go back. And he took the mantle uh, and he, you know, towel wrap. And he strikes the water. Where, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he struck the waters, they were divided here and there. And Elisha crossed over. Next verse. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw this. And you know what they said? The spirit of Elijah rests on him. It goes on to talk about how. And we're, we're going to jump towards the end of this here. Probably uh, jump down to like probably 20. Uh, it goes on to talk about how, uh, let's see, I just drew a blank. So Elijah. Uh, da, da. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they, they want to go, they want to send men after to try to find Elisha, Elijah. And Elisha's like, you're not going to find him. He's with God. And they kept on begging. And finally, they're like, he's like, just go. So they went and looked for three days. Couldn't find him. Now, He's like, I told you so. 
He said, now bring, uh, and, and then they, they're like, okay, well, the spirit of God rests upon you now. Our spirit of Elijah rests upon you now, Elisha. So uh, don't you know that this town here, the waters are terrible? Can you fix and make this whole town, all the waters in the ground and the well, and, the, and there's not even fruit in the ground? Can you fix that if, if God's with you? He's like, yeah, bring me a jar of water. Put a little salt in it. Dump it in the well. All right, it's blessed because this is what the Lord says. Bring me a new jar and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. He went out to the spring of water through salt in it and said, thus says the Lord. This is, what does the Lord say? This is important. This is how you, he's now becoming a father. Okay, this is what the Lord says. I purified these waters. There shall no more, not be from there, there shall not be from there death or unfruitfulness any longer. Just change the whole thing just by a word of the Lord. Change the generation, change the land, change the name by the word of the Lord. So the waters have been purified to this day. It's the same as we saw with Jacob, right? Uh, according to the word of Elisha when she spoke. Now, I wanted to get to this piece right here. So then he went up from Bethel, or from there to Bethel. And as he was going by the way, some young lads came to him out from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you bald headed. Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. And what, when, when, when he looked behind him and saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two female bears came out and ate 42 of them. Now, so did I want to draw attention to the bears and dishonoring your elders and all that? Yeah, that's important. You probably have heard that all your life. What I wanted to draw attention to was the bald head. Yeah. <laughs> the bald head. <laughs> Here's why. Sometimes we think, sometimes we think to learn from somebody you have to be young to learn and to honor. Elisha was bald-headed, serving a man of God to receive what he had. He wasn't a young Timothy. There's something about, we're, again, we're just talking about, we're talking about the bringing heaven to earth. We're talking about here on earth as it is in heaven. Did you know and when we get to heaven, we're all going to be in glorified bodies and we're going to kind of all be the same age? Or let me just say this. Prime. <laughs> you, you all, everyone here will be in their prime. So though we're aging here because of time, God doesn't see us any way other than according to how we're going to be like in our prime. So he doesn't think, well, he's old and he's this. He just says, there's one I'm asking you to honor. There's a flow and there's a gift and there's heaven in them that I sent to you. And, and there's, a, there's a, a service that you're to bring to them so that they can bring a service to you. Wow. That's so cool. That's just how heaven works. Honor. It's a principle of heaven. It's what keeps things grounded. It's what keeps things in order. It's how it goes well with you. It's how you fulfill your destiny. How? Honor. Because you honored. No matter if you're young, no matter if you're old, no matter if you're bald-headed, no matter what's going on, you, we, we honor. Jesus, we're, just for time's sake, Jesus, he, he, had, he held his father in high esteem to the point that he said, I only say what my father says. Have you ever had a kid say, uh, act like that. Maybe you've watched it on a movie when, when his, the dad says, hey, I'll be right back. And kid's like, yeah, I'll be right back. We're going to the gas station. We're going to the gas station. We're going to get a treat. We're going to get a treat. Have you, have you, ever, have you seen that? Have you had your, your kid follow in your footsteps and only say what your father, he was, he, he, it's because they're smitten. So in love, so you, you, you can imagine why he sweat blood in the garden. Because he was going to be separated from the one that he loved. Amen. Only say what the father says. I only do what the father does. I want you to see it like this. If dad's walking like this in the, in the snow, guess where the son's walking? You know, because his legs are shorter. Did you? All right. <laughs> You know, you gotta thank you, Lord. Amen. Honor, honor, honor. So I wanted to close with this. I wanted to close with um, with each other. 
Because this is, again, going, going back to, like, what does it look like day to day? Okay, that's great. We should do that with fathers. That's great. Do that spiritual parent. That's great. But let's, let's just look at others. Matthew 25, verse 40. Because this is key. Man, this is key. Again, to have heaven here on earth. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Very I say unto much, as what you have done to the least of these, you have done it unto me. So this is the Lord just simply talking about this passage where he's like, hey, when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When you, I was hungry, when I needed clothing, when, uh, when I was in jail. When I was in jail, you know, because I was, made some choices that you didn't make, of course, or you didn't get caught. He said, when you came to me, when you... And he said, and so we're talking about honoring our father. When you fed me. Who did you feed lately? When was the last time you fed the Lord? Why don't you think of it? Putting this passage into, into question, when was the last time you fed the Lord? Did you know the Lord's in prison? Amen. Think about that one. When was the last time you visited the Lord in prison? Your, let me say it this way. Your father's in prison. Maybe it's not the government's job to try to re, you know, get people back into this world. Maybe if we were treating our father the way he is worthy of, it would change something. See, because a system never restores people. It's, it's hands. I, I'm so thankful to have, a, uh, to have fr- friends and family and, and, and relationships and and people there that can help you do things that you, it makes it so difficult by yourself. Last night I had a, a piece of metal in my foot, on my, in my heel, on the backside where I couldn't see it to get it out. I was so thankful to have a wife that could take a tweezers and pull a, 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 a metal sliver out. Just, this is the picture of just having somebody do for, do for you. Do, just the, the picture of what heaven looks like. Service. That's called ministry. This is, ministry is service. Serving the Lord. Just that's what heaven's going to look like. It's going to be, you're going to be serving the Lord. Go there. You're going to be serving, being service. What, when is the last time you bought your, your father a, a shirt? You know, this, this is heaven on earth. Seeing our Father in others, seeing God in others. Well, I want you to think about this, that the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ, this is Romans, that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you. I want you to look to the left and the right. God's in you. Think about that. Next time you, God's in you. God's in you. God's in you. So, God, my Father's in you. Think about that. How I treat you. How I pause or don't pause. Ah, and I I understand that's a culture thing, north south thing. Uh, You know, I'm busy. I got things going on. I understand that. You got things going on. But who am I honoring? You know, we. I I mentioned a few weeks ago about uh, when when somebody has a barn that's being. You know, you know, remember back in the day when somebody had a barn fire and the town would come together and they'd go out there and they'd raise the barn in a day and, and people brought their nails and boards and saws and, you know, all things kind of like Acts 2, 42, all things in common. Or like, let's say, we, we see this best picture and people feel so loved when there's like a tornado, like right up. And what do you see? It's like the, just out there, what? Loving them, serving the Father. This is what ministry looks like, serving the Father. How am I serving the Father? When I serve people. This is heaven on earth. You know what this is? Honoring our Father. This is what He desires more than anything else. Honor. You want to honor Him? Honor them. I'll give you this last verse. Romans 12, 10. Love one another. 
pause with that. Love one another. Don't kind of, I'm going to just jump over mentally to 1 Corinthians. Stop counting your, how you've been wronged. You can't love somebody when you're counting how you've been wronged. And don't, don't be, if we're going to love other people, don't, don't put a support when somebody tells you how they've been wrong. Don't prop that up. You know, don't back that up and be like, yeah, I see that. All you did is allow it to be seen in their life that much more. Instead, let's hold up the truth in love, which is, man, I walk in love here. We're, gonna, we're not going to count that one. And, and God, God, let's put God to work because love, God, never fails. So love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in what? Showing honor. Showing value. Show esteem. So Romans 5.5, 5, last verse. Romans 5.5. 5. It says this, that the love of God Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So I just spoke to you about walking in love, holding value, loving other people, all this kind of stuff. Maybe you're in the, if you're not right now, it's going to happen. A trial, a tribulation will come where you're going to be at odds with somebody, where you're going to have to put into practice walking in love, okay? Not counting. You just go to 1 Corinthians, you'll see this, 13. But he says this, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Ghost who who has been given to us. But how, if it's in here, how do I get it out of here? How do I get what God put in me out here? Because it seems like all that comes out is just, ah. You ever have been there? But yet, his love's in there. Here's how. Put value on them. And all of a sudden, love when you, again, heaven has been shed abroad in your heart. The love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. How do I bring heaven to earth? Honor. When I honor you, when I value, put, put value on your husband. If all you've been just, just it's problem after problem after problem, you want to untap and you want to get love back into play. And you've been trying, you've been trying, you've been trying. Quit trying to love. Instead, set value. Set, set value and what will happen is love I don't love you anymore no 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 you don't value you don't value anymore or you value less than you did before or you value you more than you used to value value you know what Let's put heaven, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, here on earth as it is in heaven. How do I do that? Honor, value, God's in you. I'm going to serve my Father today. I'm going to serve my Father today. I'm going to serve my Father today. And that makes me, that allows me to be patient when, when, when I'm just, it allows me to not count. It allows me to believe and to hope the best. It allows me to, to see differently and it pulls it pulls not just what I it pulls heaven to earth amen amen let's just bow our heads and close our eyes and Pastor Austin is going to come and and close us out this is you know even every time we come together um, I want to think about that how can I honor the father you know when we come into church and um, and we come to worship we, we, we come more than just to get a cup of coffee or, or to sit in a chair or, or just to lift our hands only to the Lord in heaven. But we, we come to, 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 to connect and meet with our Father, just who, who's in and living and walking among us. And so I, I, that's just, I just want that to be the case. I always think of how I can honor the Lord when I come in my giving, in my serving, in my talk, in my hug, in my giving of a word of the Lord to somebody else. Did you know prophecy and speaking the word of God into people's life 
a father, there should be, there are fathers in this house that the word and the blessing is to be going forth into sons and changing generations and generations where there was curses, there's to be release of blessings in the house, in the house. This is where it happened with Jacob, in the house, and Ian Isaac, in the house, there's to be blessings decreed. There's to be hands laid on when you, there's to be, there's to, in, in this place, in this house. So Father, I thank you for just a work that you're doing in this house and in these people. And I thank you that you said that, that, that you would be seen and that you would be known by our love for one another. So Father, we just, we just today we make a decision and we ask you to open our eyes to see the value in your children in our brothers, in our sisters, in our fathers, in our friends, in our enemies. Let us see as you see. Eyes that you have. Thank you. And we do, we pray, Father, here on earth, as it is in heaven, that honor and value would reign. Value for others. Honor what you say. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You know, um, something that I heard a long time ago and that uh, bears repeating. If my doctrine doesn't cause me to fall more in love with people, if what I believe doesn't cause me to fall more in love with people or the Father. I better check what my doctrine is. If my doctrine stands above as a, critique, a critiquing Father, I better check it. See, part of the hindrance of speaking the truth is our ability to love. Speaking the truth in love administers grace. Truth without love, no grace. Just uh, in your face. That's not the way the church is to be. That's not the way. That's why I, lo I, lo I love uh, uh, the creative liberty that they've taken in the, the documentary, or not the documentary, but the movie or the show series called The Chosen. How many of you have seen that, some of it? Why? Because they, they cast a Jesus that looks with love but yet holds to truth look with love hold to truth freedom look and so I just love that picture of that Jesus he just he's like ah, you know just he just has those eyes of love and you know when love is in your heart it'll be seen in your eyes as a man thinks in his heart Right here. It's seen. Amen. Pastor Austin, will you come?